I know the draft is still a ways out, but let me tell you, there are so many teams out there that really need to move up. McShay has Bryce Young from Alabama going number one to the Colts, who he projects making a trade with the Bears. It makes sense for most teams to trade up in the draft if they've identified a player that is truly can't miss material. Well, let's take a look at eight NFL teams that need to trade up in this year's draft. Starting off down in Duval with the Jacksonville Jaguars, who heading into the draft already have nine overall picks in total. Despite having a bevy of selections, just one of them is in the first round, the 25th overall pick. But with Miami forfeiting pick number 21, it's essentially the 24th overall pick. After Jacksonville's resurgence last year, during which the team rallied from a 4-8 start to the year to win 5 straight and qualify for the postseason, the Jags feel like they finally have a core of guys to build around. Especially with the way that Trevor Lawrence is slinging the ball down the stretch of the season. Not to mention the way he rallied the troops during that insane wildcard comeback against the Los Angeles Chargers. The team's head coach, Doug Peterson, talked about the window they see in front of them, saying during his end of season press conference that the opportunity is now and the team needs to strike while the iron is hot, so to speak. And what better way for the Jags to push their chips into the middle of the table than to pick up the phone and make some calls to try and package some of their picks, perhaps along with a player or two to try and move up and get a legit difference maker at one of the most important positions in the game, defensive end. We've seen time and time again that a game-breaking pass rusher can completely alter a franchise's trajectory. And while the Jags already have Josh Allen at linebacker, trading up to add a freak of nature like Miles Murphy out of Clemson would be a great opportunity. Murphy is projected to go somewhere in the top 10, and the Jags would be wise to try and find a means to go up and get him. Despite the fact that their season went in opposite directions, really in the most extreme way possible, for similar reasons to Jacksonville, the New York Jets also absolutely need to find a way to move up in the draft and find a player that'll allow them to capitalize on the young, talented core guys that they have, and get them into legitimate contention. Although the Jets don't have nearly as many picks as Jacksonville, to me, they still need to find a way to move up in the draft and take one of the top-tier offensive linemen that are on the board. The Jets may be able to get their man with the 13th overall pick, but if they have their sight set on someone like Ohio State's Paris Johnson Jr. or Northwestern's Peter Skoronsky, then they may not want to chance it. In which case, a move into the top 10 makes all the sense in the world. Now, of course, this is all assuming that the Jets have some other plans at the quarterback position, whether it's a blockbuster trade for Lamar Jackson or simply signing a vet like Derek Carr or Ryan Tannehill. Because let's face it, we have all seen enough of Zach Wilson. And we do not need to see the Jets wasting any assets to move up for a lineman if they aren't getting a new signal caller for him to protect. Next up, we have the Indianapolis Colts, who after nearly five years of quarterback purgatory following Andrew Luck's shocking retirement, need to finally bite the bullet and commit to a full rebuild. And yes, of course, that involves actually getting a legitimate replacement at quarterback. First, it was Phil Rivers, then Carson Wentz, and most recently, Matt Ryan. These three had varying degrees of success, yes, but I wouldn't say that any of them brought any real sense that they were capable of leading the Colts towards their ultimate goal of being a legitimate Super Bowl contender once again. That process starts with nailing this year's draft, particularly as it relates to the quarterback position. Unfortunately for the Colts, their horrendous 2022 season apparently wasn't horrendous enough as they landed the fourth overall pick, which much to the chagrin of Colts fans may not be high enough to get one of the top two QB prospects this year. The good news is they have a pick in every round this year and really nothing to lose heading into the 2023 season. So they can include some of those picks and perhaps some proven vets as well in a potential deal to move up. Whether they full speed ahead and jump to one or settle in at two, well, that depends on how much confidence they have in the top QB prospects. And if they've identified any key differentiators between Alabama's Bryce Young and Ohio State's CJ Stroud. My gut says they don't want to risk it and they'll attempt to swap with Chicago for the first pick. Indianapolis has a pretty good history with taking QBs first overall. I mean, they did go from Peyton Manning to Andrew Luck. Indy needs to trade up and make sure that they get the right quarterback to right the ship. That being said, there will be some serious competition on the trade market for Indy as they try to move into the top spot to get first dibs on their quarterback of the future. Because there are quite a few teams that may be ready to hit the reset button and call up Chicago in the hopes that they can bring in a new quarterback. Namely, the Carolina Panthers and the Tennessee Titans. 
Heading into the draft, these two sit in similar positions, both in terms of draft order and of need. Carolina sits at 9th overall, while Tennessee is 2 back at 11. And as you might have noticed, if you watched either of these two teams last year, both need a quarterback in a bad way. Tannehill is likely gone in the Music City, and during his stint as the starter last year, Malik Willis did not look even remotely close to being an option. Short or long term. Yeah, it was that bad. At this point, drafting a quarterback isn't even remotely optional in Tennessee. And considering the Titans have seen what mediocrity at the position looks like and the ceiling it comes with, let's just say I would be very surprised if Tennessee isn't aggressive in trying to move to the top of the draft for a QB that they like. Carolina, on the other hand, well, Sam Darnold put them in a tough position with the way he played down the stretch of the season. He played just well enough to breathe a bit of hope into the notion that the Panthers have something in him, which, considering his track record, is more than likely a trap. Carolina needs to look past the temptation and not kick this can down the road any further. With four picks in the first 100 selections, the Panthers have plenty of draft capital to shift around, and they would be wise to throw their hat in the ring and compete with the Colts and Titans for a top pick that that gets them one of the blue chip quarterbacks. I suppose that if they strike out on trying to ink a deal that puts them in a position to take a top tier prospect, they could always scour their second group of guys, because after CJ Stroud and Bryce Young go, there are still a couple of names that have promise. The likes of Will Levis from Kentucky, and Anthony Richardson from the University of Florida in particular. But they'll still have to be careful if they think that Levis or Richardson will just fall to them, because there are a couple of other teams in need of a quarterback of the future who might be looking to trade up and snag one of these signal callers. Two teams that that jump out to me in this camp are the Washington Commanders and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who currently own the 16th and 19th picks in the first round respectively. Both organizations desperately need some new blood under center. Tampa is now going to go through what New England did a couple of years ago and have to find a way to move on from Tom frickin' Brady. Now luckily for the Buccaneers, they still have some talent on that roster with guys like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And after a down year on the defensive side of the ball with a couple of quality pickups in free agency and more importantly, a fully healthy Vita Vea, the Bucs really might be able to jumpstart a rebuild if they nail the quarterback position down in the draft. Personally, I would love to see them go up and get someone like Will Levis, who could potentially slot into the starting lineup day one. Meanwhile, it has truly been a revolving door quarterback in DC, and it seems like the Carson Wentz experiment has officially gone belly up, and the team's decision makers seem to be out on the idea of Taylor Heineke as their starter long term. Which at this point is somewhat understandable no matter what his diehard supporters say. He's fun to watch, but he clearly has a ceiling, not to mention a tendency to make some pretty ugly mistakes. So yeah, while he is a fan favorite, it does seem like it is time for the commanders to start actually retooling their future by moving up in the draft to snag one of the first round QBs that are available. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see them go up and get a high upside guy like Richardson and let him sit for a year, or at least to start the season since they'll have Heineke as an option for the short term. And last but not least, we have one that might come as a little bit of a surprise, but how about the Baltimore Ravens? If Baltimore is intent on keeping Lamar Jackson, which, if they have any brains left at the top of the organization, they would be. They need to start getting serious about putting some playmakers around him on the offensive side of the ball. I get the temptation to neglect the other key skill positions with someone like Lamar, who in reality is instant offense, but there comes a point where teams can become too dependent on a superstar quarterback, particularly one with the kind of athleticism that Jackson possesses. We've seen in the past with the Carolina Panthers and Cam Newton, they were so spoiled by his ability to create something out of nothing that they completely left their star hanging out to dry in terms of getting him some guys that could help take some of the burden off of him. And at this point, the Ravens more than owe it to Lamar to move up in the draft and get a wide receiver that can open up the offense. The Ravens are currently slotted at 23, and while there will obviously still be some talented receivers left, it's high time that Baltimore stops playing around and bring in someone like Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio State. Smith and Jigba possesses a level of elusiveness and route running ability that frankly no Ravens whiteout during Lamar's tenure has had ever. Hollywood Brown was good when they had him, but now he's out of town, and let's face it, even he wasn't a true number one guy. 
which Smith and Jigba has the potential to be. So look for the Ravens to try and move up to ensure that they don't get beat out and snag in the former Buckeye. Otherwise, it'll be another year of Rashad Bateman, Andy Isabella, and Demarcus Robinson. Jeez, no wonder Lamar seems so unhappy in the Charm City. Which NFL team do you think needs to move up the most in the 2023 draft? Was there anyone that we missed? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. But hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.